Hockey Stats Video Productions presents World Class Nine Ball. Hi, I'm Jerry McWhorter, and I am here with uh, my guest Paul Pottier, famous Canadian Nine Ball wizard. Uh, we're at the scene, uh, the Sands Regent Open Number 19 in Reno, Nevada. We've got a fabulous match in front of us here, Paul. We're looking at uh, Efren Reyes and Rafael Martinez. Uh, let me ask you a question, notwithstanding who we're sitting in front of at this time, what match we're going to watch, who's your favorite all-time player to watch? Yeah, that's really tough, but uh, actually, Rafael is. Only from uh, <clears throat> the experience I've had with him in the past, he's, uh, I, I consider him the da most dangerous cubist alive. And he's playing, of course, Efren, who, uh, who certainly is a magician. But uh, Rafael that can do some in incredible things. Well, uh, I think more people are familiar with Efren, and he, for myself, undoubtedly is my favorite player to watch. And he does, they call him the magician, and he does so many things that uh, ref seem like magic. Uh, and the, the, <clears throat> the more pool you play, the more you understand how difficult what he's doing. Um, Raphael, on the other hand, is probably kind of new to some of the uh, spectators. However, if you look at Raphael throughout the match and see the intensity that he has and the powerful game that he uh, exhibits, he's a treat to watch. Oh yeah, he's like a Bjorn Borg, uh, if you know tennis, of uh, pool because he's, uh, no matter what happens, he's cool. Just, uh, he's no emotion at all. He can pull off the most greatest shot in the world and, and no, no smile comes to his lips yet. His opponent can make uh, a real fluke, a real bad shot and come out smelling like a rose and Raphael won't Look at this shot. Look at that shot. I mean, that, oh. that's, uh, I'm telling you, we're going to see magic here. You, you call uh, Efren the magician, as everybody does, and, and he, he is, definitely. He's beat me both world championships. I played well against him, but he, he played really well. Raphael is, um, uh, you know, a magician by himself uh, from, the, from uh, Mexico, and so uh, the audience is just going to absolutely adore this match. No matter what happens here, it's going to be a super match. Well, uh... The very first shot we saw of the game was Efren breaking the balls, not pocketing a ball and leaving Raphael hooked. I, if I could only have one dream as far as seeing absolutely perfect nine ball, and that would be to have Efren have a little stronger break. If uh, he had the break of a Johnny Archer or an Earl Strickland, uh, I don't know who sure could win. True. Well, actually, Raphael's break isn't exactly the most awesome either. He, uh, he's a fabulous player all around. He's just solid all around. Uh, if his break is working for him, uh, you know, he's dangerous. But, and the same thing with Efren. I, I've seen Efren break pretty good, uh, but he's not powerful. You know, uh, if, if it takes a real powerful break, Efren, Efren isn't going to uh, break and run a lot of racks. And it's the same thing with, uh, with Raphael, but if they don't need that, man, they're the two most dangerous players alive in my view. And you're going to see a lot of safety play here with them too. If they're, if uh, look at this shot. I mean, that's just awesome, kicking and, and leaving them safe. Now, see that shot right there. That's something that I'd have to say the Americans learned from Efren single-handedly. When he came to this country and started playing nine ball, and nobody had ever had ever heard of him or seen him, or even Filipino pool players at all, he came over and played under the name of Caesar Morales in a famous tournament in in Texas, and was shooting shots like that with such ease and coming up with, with accurate hits on the ball to the proper side, pocketing mm -hmm. the ball, coming up safe. And that the only thing people could think is that he was just consistently lucky. <laughs> but the Americans uh, s soon wised up to uh, that level of the game, and now it's become commonplace. And so many players like Raphael that have learned to, to really master it. Definitely. Like that... Um kick shot that, that Efren just played. I think he just took, he, he played a little too fast. If he had taken a little more time with it, uh, you know, he might have been better with it. He he hit it good, but he hit a little too thin, a little thicker, and he, you know, he would have snickered uh, Raphael back or left him safe. Well, let me ask you a question, Paul. I know you're a f uh, fairly well-known uh, tournament winner, a snooker player from, from Canada. Now, snooker, you'd think a uh, safety play was such an important, isn't it such an important part of the game? Was the kicking of the game that evolved? Yeah, there, well, there were some shots. Uh, you know, we played a lot of three rail shots, whether they were uh, coming off a ball or going to a ball. And uh, snooker, you play an awful lot of safeties. It's different, but you, if, you, if you're bringing the one, those shots that you use a lot of snooker over to pool, you can use them. And, and uh, my first tournament I played here, 
I didn't know nine ball very well at all, but I placed fifth in the tournament. I used a lot of the snooker stuff. I just made sure I uh, I played a lot of safeties. I snookered them a lot. I play more offensive now, but um, I like to put them both together. It's important, I, I believe, to uh, to have a balance between both of them. And you'll see the balance right here with these guys, no question. Well, the first game is awarded to Raphael. He batted around some safeties there in the beginning. And the first shot came up with the first shot. Raphael has run out. Let me, in the, the beginning of this match here, let me point out a couple of things that I think certainly as an instructional reasons are super important playing any kind of pocket billiard game. And that's what Raphael has really mastered. And that is, once he sets up on the shot, his body stays perfectly still. As he, as he executes through the shot, his body stays put down in line. He doesn't jump up. He doesn't slowly move. He stays perfectly solid on the ball. The other thing that it works in conjunction with that is the speed of his stroke as he his practice strokes back and forth, or as in golf they call it the waggle, back and forth. The shot that it, when he executes the stroke, it's very similar or the same as the practice strokes. He doesn't come back with his final stroke being a little erratic or a little faster or little subtleties that, if they're pointed out, sometimes aren't uh, noticed but very critical. True. Uh, <clears throat> I teach an awful lot, and I teach a lot of basics. Um, both these guys uh, are fabulous players, but I certainly wouldn't want to teach their styles. Although, uh, one thing that's very common with both of them is what you just mentioned. Another thing is, uh, is if you notice, their their right hand is extremely loose on the on the cue all the time. Very, very loose. Yes. Uh, for a player that doesn't have a lot of confidence, or has made a few errors, uh, you can start getting. Uh, into trouble. You start uh, twisting and turning a little bit, but for these two players, uh, they've gotten their ability so high that, uh, you know, they just stay solid through that anyway. But they've got, it's, it's, it's a stroke that uh, once mastered is fabulous because uh, you can play anything. Well, I've learned a lot about uh, the game of nine ball by watching these videotapes and then, of course, sitting in the booth with, the, with such great players. And one of the things that I really remember Buddy Hall saying is that, uh, one of the tricks that he uses and, and teaches is when you're playing bad, deliberately make sure that you loosen up that grip hand. That's make a good point, because you don't get, you, you then aren't as stiff. And you want to be loose, just like in golf, you want to be loose in the club. Um, a top uh, golfer, you'll notice, uh, doesn't get blisters in his hand because he, if, uh, if he's holding the golf club and you try to pull it out of his hand, you can pull it right out of his hand. It's nice and loose, mm -hmm. but he's still got control over it. The same thing in pool. Um, both these guys hold it very loose, but they have great control over it. Uh, it's too bad the camera can't pick up his right hand there, but you'd see exactly what I mean. That was a, a cute little shot there. That uh, cheating, cheating the uh, the other corner with the cue ball just perfectly. Coming up with coming two rails out of the corner, and then the fourth rail reversing the ball right. and kind of dying into position. This is exactly a shot that we played in snooker an awful lot. Those uh, either kicking those shots or making them and coming around. And, and you should see some great safety plays in snooker using uh, three or four rails. And accurate, right behind a ball uh, over you know, after 12 feet. The score is one to one. Uh, and this is Efren's second break to the table. Didn't pocket a ball the first time. Let's see how he does now. Well, it was a good break, except uh, now he got he got a shot on the one, but you notice uh, the cue ball went forward a little bit. <clears throat> Both of these guys are bouncing the cue ball into the one a little bit too much, wh which will happen. And f because of that, the cue ball will go forward a little bit. Uh, and generally, the one ball goes down the table as it did, but he, he does have a shot on him. That's kind of fortunate. Generally, what that happened is that one ball will be on that back rail. Well, these types of racks that uh, all tied up look like a puzzle. Uh, those are the ones I like to see Efren maneuver his way around. Well, 
let's see what he's going to do here. He's uh, He doesn't have uh, any type of a combination. Uh, I, I think he's going to have to play safe here. He can either, um, well, just clip off that three, I guess, and freeze on the back rail. Um, or try, well, you know. How close does that carom angle look, the three off the four? I don't know if that nine ball is in the way. It's hard for us to tell from here. The nine ball is not in the way. I think he'd have he'd want to draw a little bit because it looks like it, it would uh, shoot out to the to that other diamond. Let's see what he's going to do. If he draws into that ball, we know he's trying to play the carom. Yeah, he did draw into it, but it ended up going too far forward. Because when you put draw on a ball when the two when they both are frozen, as you know, it'll go forward. And so uh, he did that, made it go forward too much. Well, he had to hit that ball with a little bit of force to get the four ball out of the way, the traffic of all those other balls. It complicated the shot. It was a real tough shot, no question about it. I wouldn't want to have to use it, <laughs> play it at all. Well, it was a gamble. He, if, if he misses it, he does exactly what happened. He opens all the balls up and, and uh, gives Raphael an open shot. I think I'd have played, uh, you know, the, the thin off the three myself. What you hear in the back, what you heard in the background a minute ago, was people knocking balls on the table, which is something we actually don't allow. So, uh, because it, it just puts marks on the table, and it's, very, it's harder and harder to rack the next racks. So, if you guys at home playing pool, I'd, I'd recommend that just be a little bit more patient when you're racking the balls, and you'll find a way to freeze them up without having to pound them into the slate. What's most critical in that is that when a table, the cloth is brand new, making sure that the first racks that are going on it are very, are very tight and very uh, frozen together, and then the, the table will retain that memory. Well, exactly, because when you, as long as you don't, you know, again, don't pound them then, because you don't have to. Once you break the balls on there, you're going to be putting little indentations in the in the cloth as it is. They're going to make have little movements. You're right. But pounding them is uh, definitely not the answer. Well, what have you been up to lately, Paul? I know you've been real busy. Yeah, I'm doing a lot. Of, I'm back up in Canada. I've been back up there for almost a year now, and uh, I'm working with a company called Dufferin, which is a major, major manufacturer of uh, billiard equipment. And um, because of the Canadian dollar uh, being so low right now, we're even uh, starting to market our, our business, our services down in uh, Oregon, uh, uh, in Washington, and Northern California, uh, a gentleman named Wally Unger and myself from Dufferin are uh, helping open pool rooms. We've uh, been opening, uh, we've opened almost 45 pool rooms in the last year, and um, uh, we've come gotten pretty good at that. So we're starting to market our services down south now, and uh, our Canadian dollar, like I said, is so low. Our, our product is great, and now the prices of them are real low for an American. So uh, hopefully you'll see a lot of different pool rooms in, uh, in those states. Other than that, I'm also working hard on developing a pro tour in Canada for 1995. And doing a lot of teaching as, as well, so I'm pretty busy. Well, we're always seeing more and more Canadian players that are showing up on the uh, tournament, the tour here. And uh, a lot of good players. Great players, you bet. There's a uh, there's a whole bunch of super players on in Canada. Most of them came from uh, snooker, uh, as I did. I played snooker at a real high level for 25 years before I moved over to pool. And um, you know, of course, a player of a high level in snooker moving over to pool is already a pro level. The first time he gets on a pool table, mm -hmm. not necessarily not necessarily a touring pro level, but a, a pro level. And um, you're going to see uh, quite a few more Canadians coming down. Well, especially if the money gets better. That particular shot that us, we saw uh, Raphael shoot right there, at first look at it, it looks like he can't quite see enough of the, of the three ball that he's going to hit the six. I've seen him shoot that shot a lot, and we all basically know the shot, that he's just he's, he's Threw contacting the, the three ball with a lot of spin and throwing it in the hole. He seems awfully comfortable with that. I keep, keep seeing him... Uh, get shots out of out of that technique that uh, I think were a little more than could be expected. 
He's very, very confident with his ability to do anything that's necessary on a pool table, and, and that's strong, of course, uh, for all, any of us. Our confidence level is, is uh, very, very important, uh, but his is uh, extremely high, and um, and rightfully so, because he can execute practically anything on the table. But yeah, he I noticed um, over the years, I w watch him play, he likes to throw the ball in a lot, and uh, on these pockets, it's easy to do that. They're very large. See his elevated back foot there. And yeah. Uh, Ballas, ballet. Uh, One of those Mexicans do stance. that. <laughs> <coughs> He's been using use a lot of open bridge too. That's a real uh, snooker trait. Yes, he's got a long bridge. Actually, snooker, um, a lot of snooker players had long bridge as well. Cliff Thorburn, uh, 1980 world snooker champion from Canada. Actually, the only the only non-Britisher ever to win this snooker, world snooker championships. Uh, Cliff uh, had a real long bridge for a long time. But he's moving over to pool now. He's going to be on this tour within, within a year. And uh, he's just starting to sh shorten his bridge now. But it was really long. And... Um, that's a, I noticed Raphael has always had a long bridge. It really helps you in, in sighting the ball, but a little harder to follow through and get a get a, a solid hit on the cue ball. But he does it well. They're scrutinizing the rack a little bit here. Well, it's just so easy to make a ball on these on these tables here. So, uh, but if you know if you give them a bad rack, you can, that can screw that up. Uh, it's, a, it's very important. I think it's a bad habit not to check the rack. You should always check the rack. Uh, that way, you don't necessarily uh, you know, think your opponent's going to screw you up, but uh, he might have uh, racked it, and when he left, the one ball kind of moved over a little bit, or something just slid open. And if you don't check the rack, it's basically your fault. Once you break and it's a bad rack. So it's important to check it. I, I've checked every single rack uh, in every single tournament I played. This is the break, so he's got to push out here. See where he pushes out. Well, there's not uh, there's not a lot of balls up at that end of the table where the one is to enable him to play an easy safety, something that he might be able to easily control the ball and, uh, and snooker. What do you think he's going to do here, Jerry? He's, he's going to deliberate this for a minute. Well, he's passing the shot back to Efren. Okay. I don't blame him at all, because even if he does go off uh, those three rails and try and get behind the three, if he's not perfect behind the three, that one ball is going to be an easy shot to jump over and over the eight and make it. So let's see what Efren does. He's going to try the same shot. Oops, he went a little too short, but he might have got real lucky here. He did. <laughs> let's just see if that one eight goes. Maybe he can throw it in. If the one eight's frozen, he could throw that in. I think he can. Just controlling it onto the one ball after. Let's see. I think he can do both. Yeah. Good shot. That's what I get for making Well, he pushed it. He pushed out to a shot that uh, was very difficult to execute bit off a little more than he could chew and uh well the thing is when you in my, you know pushing out you want to definitely push out to, to a position that's better than what you have but uh difficult for your opponent if he if he ch chooses to take it to do something so that even though you may not like the next shot that you have if he gives it back to you at least it's better than what you just had and then uh, and you can see the ball do something with it so uh, i would have pushed up probably the same position and hope my opponent took it <laughs> Better him than you, huh? Well, yeah, but you know, you you never know. I mean, some guys you just want to play so much they're going to take anything. And, and um, I know a couple of players that are like that. I always push out to real tough positions, and generally they take it. And, and then I got a next shot. And I'll tell you, Raphael is definitely someone who wants to play all the time. He always likes playing, but uh, he's not stupid. He did the right thing giving that, that shot back to Efren. You know, this could be this could this is this is a triple shot here. He got a little a little too straight on that seven ball. 
the nine could be in a worse position for him, but uh, still he's got to got to get up there. Going off the rail first. That's what I thought he was going to do. That's good. It's certainly not desirable to have to go rail first on a shot like that. Uh, True. But uh, that can, that's a little bit deceiving for for even for weaker for weaker players especially that might achieve position like that where there's no way they're going to miss the ball and the balls are all close on a certain uh, one end of the table but it's a little deceptive and they can find themselves coming up short on that nine ball or if they choose to spin it with a little inside English then coming too long and having a big deep angle on the nine ball and may not. Uh, may not realize that that position on the seven was a little more difficult than they might have thought at first. Right, right. It's funny, you know, uh, I've heard in the stands, when I've sat in the stands, uh, how uh, sometimes a top player will deliberate on a, on a very easy shot to pocket. Real easy shot. But, um, you know, but he's got a difficult position, difficult time getting to the next ball or to get to the next ball to get to the next ball. And so he's uh, really looking it over closely and, and the audience kind of going, what the heck? <laughs> Yeah, it's an easy <laughs> shot. Shoot yeah, it thing. takes a little more, uh, <laughs> a little more knowledge and experience to see the the pitfalls that might come in another shot down the line. And that's the difference sometimes between a really good player and a and a and a top pro is that uh, uh, sometimes the uh, good player is just running running through the balls like it, you know, it should be um, a Sunday walk, and uh, yet uh, doesn't see the problems that can arise through that run. Whereas a pro will see that ahead of time. And um, you know, make sure that he's a little bit perfect, more more perfect on the next shot, so that he can, you know, fix that problem before it happens. Well, he's pocketed the ball and spread them out, spread them out nicely. It looks like the six ball has got him snookered as he's shooting at the two. Does it? I think he can. Well, he's going to kick at it. Looks like. Let's take a look at. It. Yeah, yeah. He just he just he hit that two ball a little bit too full. If he hit a little thinner, his cue ball will be behind the six, and the uh, two ball will be out by where the nine was. But uh, these guys kick so good that uh, you know that was the right shot to do. Or else he was going to push to a better shot for his opponent. That's that'd be silly. So he did the right thing. That really is kind of a fundamental shot to uh, to learn to play this this caliber of nine ball you've got to be able to when the ball's a foot off the rail or you know with six, inches, inches six inches to a foot off the rail yeah. you've got to be able to kick that ball accurately correct and go one rail to get safety or control both balls well yeah yeah you you have to it's uh, and these two gentlemen are two of the best at it uh, you know so Raphael's not happy with with his shot um you know, he hit it pretty good. It's not like he hit it bad. He stopped the cue ball, and he just got a little bad kick at the end with uh, the, the one ball coming off that, whatever ball that was, five ball, I think. Uh, obviously, we know developing any kind of a game practice is super important. Uh, if you watch a lot of the tournaments that, that you'll go to, or, well, Jeff Carter is a good example, you'll see him spend hours practicing playing pool. He's a great player. And that type of shot right there where the ball is six inches to a foot away from the rail and practice kicking that ball one rail is the type of shot that he'll sit and practice. Me now too. that's something that uh, players are constantly working on running out, running out, and may overlook things like that. Th that's one of the benefits of the AccuStats, which is a st statistical analysis of your performance in a... Uh, in a given session. We're going to look at some of the AccuStats later on in the in the game, but as you study them, it'll let you see why you're losing the games and where your weaknesses are. Now, if kicking and safety play is your weakness, work on it. You need to work on it, and that's the type of shot that'll develop those types of turning turning what seems to be you being hooked into an aggressive shot with high percentages. Now, there's a here's a big switch right here. It, you know, 5-1 Four two is a huge difference, and uh, you know one, one might think, well, that's just one. You know, it's one game either way, but uh, uh, that five one, uh, you know, <laughs> is a is a huge advantage to be up that much. Four two now, it's your he's right in the game. It's real close. Um, and about about the practice thing, 100% correct. I uh, I personally would, would would find a weakness and and uh, work on it constantly. I, I also would spend hours kicking, 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 and banking, and, and uh, 
you know, you don't even notice how much you've improved on that at the beginning, you know, right then, but down the road, it really, it really shows up. And these guys, boy, they're, they're awesome at both those. Well, this particular a tough one. <coughs> this particular match is running uh, very difficult. It seems like the balls are laying funny. Then nobody's getting easy options out. They jockey around for a shot, and when somebody gets a shot, they run out with ease. Efren has uh, broke the balls, come up with no shot, has pushed out, leaving Raphael a thin hit on the one, not enough to pocket the ball. Um, and he's left him a fairly complex safety because the six ball is down here. If he does thin the one, he's going to hit the six ball. I think he, he may even be able to make that, Jerry, if he if a little check, but he's not playing the check. No, he's just thinning it. No, he You're right. <coughs> he thinned the ball and hit the s he hit the right side of the six, which allowed him to send the cue ball back up table. That was a ticklish shot. It sure took was. a lot of experience to understand exactly what part of that six he's going to hit. If he hits that six full and double kisses or leaves the, the and leaves the cue ball down there at the end of the table, it's most likely going to be anticipating the next rack. That's right. Yeah, that's a tough shot too. That kind of you know, often no, and and he, that's a bad roll there. He's got all those balls. He's got like, he's got uh, walls there and ends up a <coughs> keyhole. I can't see as well seat. as you can. Did uh, is he? Can he pocket the ball there? I think he can. Um, he might have to put a little spin on it, a little right hand check on it, but I can't tell him now. Raphael's in my way, but. With that right hand check on it. Right. Because uh, that way it kills the ball. That check, that's a. That's a, uh, a snooker term. Snooker yeah, term. See, look at that. He, he killed that too much. Can you believe that? It's, he he didn't see that much of the ball that he could do that. But uh, he did. He put a lot of right hand setting on that one and killed it right into the rail. Incredible. It's harder to do than making it. Well, he got a little bit fortunate here. The, he's snookered him with the nine balls between the one and the cue ball. However, again, the six is still down here. If the six was not there, I think he'd have a fairly easy rail first to right. pocket the one ball. Right, especially him. He'd have no problem getting off that rail from spinning, spin that one ball in, but that six does make it real tough now. I'm not sure. There might be enough room anyway. Well, I'll tell you what, if if he hadn't, if somebody wanted to get up to this shot, shoot rail first and the combination the one into the six, as ridiculous as that sounds, there's nobody that could shoot it better than Efren. I agree with you. Oh, wow, he had enough to get five yeah. and six. Look at that. The key was getting on the three, and <laughs> look at this. He got back. He was perfectly confident of going rail first, and shooting make. past the six to make the ball, and sending the cue ball three rails, <laughs> anticipating coming out in the middle there and breaking something up. Well, that's correct. I mean, you know, you, it, it's it, it's important that we point that out because uh, uh, to a, to an observer who didn't know, it looked like he was just taking a shot at it. You know, let's hope to make this ball and uh, whack it hard. That wasn't what he did at all. He he wanted to make that ball and come back for the three. <laughs> And he did get back here for the three, but now he, here he could play a, a three, three eight billiard off the seven into the side, but it's just so touchy. Uh, I think he's probably going to play a safety. I just don't know what safety he's going to play. Let's see. Yeah, I, he, I, I, he has to play safe here. The balls are clustered up that even if he did pocket the ball, I think it would be difficult. He, no oh, he rail. Played the, he played the billiard. He played... He played the carom and no rail. had no uh, rail. Yeah, he uh, play, played the combo. Boy, the, you know, the last, he's taken some very aggressive shots this match. Sure is. <coughs> Beginning players, uh, it's just kind of a quick side note on the rules. That uh, particular shot there, he made a good hit on the ball, but he didn't hit it hard enough, so n none of the balls contacted the rail after after he hit the lowest ball on the table, which gave ball in hand. That rule basically is designed to keep somebody from just rolling the cue ball up to the ball and, and leaving their opponent no shot. You have to contact a rail. 
Right. I mean, there there's still some situations where <clears throat> where you can stun a ball and roll behind another ball, and, the, and your object ball hits a rail. Um, but that's a good shot. So yeah, the rule forces you to make at least a decent shot uh, before you snicker somebody, and that's great. I think it's a super rule. Yeah, absolutely. The ball on hand and on the foul is the only rule to have in pool. It's uh, it's a great rule. Anything else is silly. Nice to see, you know, a lot of eight ball going that way now too. Yeah. To the amateur level of play, um, tavern play and eight ball leagues and stuff like that, for a long time, ball in hand was something they really knew nothing about. But it is, uh, it's becoming a very common rule in all the games. Yeah, I started, um, in 1988, I, w I started the APA up in Canada, in, uh, in Winnipeg, uh, which is uh, central Canada, north of Minneapolis, basically about 500 miles north. And uh, none of them had ever heard of ball in hand, or, or even flukes for that matter. And I brought the APA rules up there uh, into a league, and I guess because of my credibility on the pool table, uh, I was able to convince a few people and ended up uh, with 60 teams in about four months. And uh, now everybody out there is playing ball in hand, even the bar is just casual play. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's well, you it's still don't see that in, uh, uh, in casual play in the United States in bars. Well, a lot of the bars, uh, uh, you know, are frequented by all the people who are in my league, and all the tournaments that are happening in all the bars now have been since eighty eighty nine, have been ball in hand. So, because of all those bar tournaments with ball in hand, that's you know made people realize they, those rules are better. And the score at this point of the match is Martinez five and Efren two. Rafael has pocketed a ball on the break, controlled the cue ball reasonably well to the middle of the table, and it's got an ideal shot on the one ball, the good angle to come down and get on the two. Yeah, well, I'm not sure here about, well, he did, it was, that looks perfect. That's incredible. Because if he's, if he's any further, he, he can't make it and get on the four. <laughs> That's he, just perfect. He had, to, he had to come under the nine ball here to get a good angle to go back up table for the four ball. His other option was to stay way above the four ball and cut the two ball going two rails, but that would leave him on the short side of the four and, and a difficult shot on the two. He played a lot. Perfect. Yeah, he f he reasonably had about a six inch area to have perfect position and then he He hit that one a little light it. though. Yeah, he's put himself on the rail and, and then out of the pocket even. Yeah, I, uh, I'm really surprised that he hit that the way he did, and so fast. Um, because it did take a little bit more concern than that. Because he's got to get perfect in the four to get back on the five. Now, uh, he's going to get back here, I think, a little bit of stun right-hand side. No, look at that. He chose the other way, which yeah. I was surprised about, and hit it bad. Those are two, basically, he shot both those shots a little too quick. What? Look at this shot. Look at that shot. Wow. Look at that. <coughs> that was that position play as the cue ball came down table. That's the shot that uh, Raphael was trying to execute, shooting directly at the five ball. Mm -hmm. Efren was fortunate enough to go rail to go kick at it make a good hit on the five ball and achieve the same position. You know, a lot of people say there's too much luck in nine ball. Well, they're correct, but uh, as far as there's a lot of luck in nine ball, but we know you got to remember you got to make that luck happen. And the better players still come out ahead, which means that uh, it's, it's a lot of skill. You know, it, it equals out, the luck equals out. But uh, the player who's playing the most generally gets the most good luck. It's all attitude, too. If you have a great attitude, it seems that the balls roll for you. As a comment uh, Grady Matthews said one time uh, at a tournament, he said, uh, well, the balls always know who's winning. <laughs> I thought that was the funniest thing, but it, uh, it seems to go that way, doesn't it? When you're playing well and everything's going well, the they balls just, work for you. They just delivered the statistics here of the uh, up until the rack previous. 
Uh, we look at um, Efren Reyes is shooting a total TPA score of 913, and Raphael shooting a 933. And as far as safety errors, Efren has only made one safety error. Raphael has made three safety errors. However, Efren has missed pocketing a ball, and Raphael has not missed pocketing a ball. He just missed one on this rack. We right. just saw that. Uh, and that could cost him. It cost not him reflected match. on this. Well, oh boy, that was the ideal break. Balls are spread out nicely. This is. Uh, this is the typical example of making an error, missing a ball, how it usually costs you two games. How it could cost you the whole match, especially on these tables. And, um, well, I just finished playing Earl Strickland. I didn't miss a ball and, uh, and lost. <laughs> you know, and you can, at this level, you can play awesome and still lose. And you can lose at a big, at a big margin as well. So, um, you know, one miss, and, and you know, and especially when uh, the guy's starting to get into the balls, you may not get back to the table for a while, and if you do, you don't like it, oftentimes. Let's just see how, how Efren keeps Raphael on his chair for a while. Here, I would have liked to have left myself a little bit more angle to get back down on the A. He's got to hit a little bit harder now. And see, he put, got himself into trouble here. More angle, and it would have been easier, but... Uh, it would have been a little sloppy. Well, the more angle that you're talking about would have made it a natural cut, and you would have had wouldn't have had to do anything to the cue ball nope. to uh, to achieve the angle that you want coming down the table. That particular shot there, since he was a little more straight in, he had to dig into the ball more, to use a term, in order to cut, to get the speed to come down table. However, as he's digging in and getting that speed, he's also responsible for the direction of the cue ball. Right. It's not natural. Harder to control it. Harder to be perfect on that direction. And, and you just saw it just there. I mean, this is one of the most awesome uh, uh, shape players there is. And he uh, he didn't get on this eight ball. That's that six ball. And I think this is going to cost him. And um, you know, he shouldn't have. He's, he's getting a little sloppy is what yeah, I see. Yeah, he just kicked at that eight ball and, and then hit the eight off the rail. That is unlike him. I would expect him to hit that eight solid as could be, possibly make it in the corner, bank, bank it one it. rail. Correct. Uh, I mean, he mishit that that ball considerably. I, he's just playing a little too. I wouldn't call it loose. I call it sloppy uh, for careless effort. For effort, yeah, careless. That's probably a better word. <laughs> uh, when I do, though, I call it sloppy. <laughs> so well, <laughs> give myself brings a up to the score six games to three. Martinez is going to charge him if he uh, if he gets a little careless, and and he just did. Um, really surprising to see uh, Efren do what he just did on that ball, on that six ball. Actually, to get on the six ball that we did in the first place, it wasn't uh, that hard to get on it better. Taking a quick look here at uh, Johnny Archer running out uh, this rack, which would bring the score. He's trailing in that match to Tommy Kennedy. Johnny's going to be out of this this rack, of bringing the score to four games to five. And this this table he's playing on breaks so easy. That's the table I just finished playing with uh, with Earl, and Earl kind of hit it real light the last four breaks because of the corner ball was going in, and uh, he you know broke and ran out four on me. So uh, at nine nine, I didn't see another ball. So if Johnny makes his nine ball here, you, you may not see. Tommy get to the table for a while. Well, Raphael's back at the table here. He's just broke the balls and uh, didn't pocket a ball in the break and has left Efren with a very good shot on the on the one and a nice angle to get to the two. He forgot to mark his score and just walked up there to do so. Yeah, and you see the balls here in the, uh, by, the, by the spot now, not as cluttered as it was before in the last few racks. Um, I'm not sure they, they're racking uh, as tight as they can, or maybe it's just tougher on this particular table. Because uh, when you break the balls on a table that's racked tight, though, normally they spread a lot better than that. Well, like you say, uh, banging the balls into the slate as you're um, racking them may sh look like a short-term fix, meaning that that particular rack will freeze up. But this is, may this is the type of thing that can, can result from it uh, right. sessions later on down the line. Right. <laughs> that table gets uh, 
doesn't know what to do anymore. It's got so many holes in it. Well, Efren's giving us his uh, <laughs> gratuitous laugh. He, he's incredible. Uh, incredible. He, he knows he's not playing well. No. I'll tell you, I have to say that's one thing that I've been so impressed with over the years with Efren is possibly the greatest all-around pool player that's ever played, and, and what a great attitude. A real nice guy. Doesn't speak a lot of English, but uh, he's funny. He's uh, you're right. I've never seen uh, nobody can speak badly about Efren. He's always uh, a gentleman, and and he comes up with some funny things too. You know. <laughs> he's also actually the only guy who's ever beat me in the World Championships. He beat me in Taipei. He finished third. I finished ninth, and he beat me this last year, my first time on on TV, and uh, Efren play second losing to Johnny and, and I lost to Efren again. <laughs> I was about to say that uh, is when you probably became most uh, recognizable to many of the spectators was your performance in the world championships Great kick. TV match. Yeah he, he kicked the ball two rails there the four ball and came up with a fortunate roll he pocketed the four in the side. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Since then, um, you know, I go in any town, and and basically they, they said, oh, I saw you on TV last week. It's incredible uh, how many people are actually watching that, and yet we don't get enough coverage. Uh, I would certainly have preferred to have the match I played earlier than that, the, the day before against Earl, on TV. Uh, Earl had me 11-3, and I come back and beat him. That was uh, one of the greatest matches of my of my career. But I, when I played Earl Afford, I didn't play quite as well, and he just went over me. He played real well. How much of that do you attribute to your first time on TV? Actually, the television doesn't bother me at all because I'm always doing shows, and um, if anything, it, it'll get me up. But um, I was so pumped after beating Tony Allen, Rafael Martinez, and Earl Strickland back to back. I didn't get any sleep. I couldn't sleep. I was just so wired. <laughs> and uh, so the next day, uh, I just wasn't myself. Sleep is my most important friend, my best friend. If I don't get enough of, of that, though, I. Uh, and I think it's the same with everybody. Uh, sleep is real important. And I just, um, my timing is off, my pace is off, my attitude's not as good. So I was a little, a little weak against uh, Efren, and uh, he just pulverized me. Well, careless position play is uh, given Raphael a, a lead of seven to three. Uh, Efren has been a little bit careless. He got poor position and forced himself to play safe. Um, he did get the safety, but uh, any time you relinquish the table to a world-class player, uh, hooked or not, you run the risk of, of losing that game. Let's take a look at, at Rafael's break there. He broke them with great control. The cue ball didn't do anything except just put all its energy into the, into the rack. Uh, it's unfortunate he didn't make a ball. He left uh, Efren with a, with a good shot on the ball, but uh, on the one ball here. But he did break it well. Not very hard, but he did break it uh, controlled. He's going to have to find another way to break on this table. It doesn't look like that's going to put a ball in the hole for him. If he gets back up to the table, that is. Back up table, get on the side. Yeah. Well, he came up a little short, hit that a little bit light. He's on the wrong side of the four ball, and it's going to force him to send his cue ball down to that end of the table and then have to come all the way back here to get on the five. That's not what he wants to do. Yeah, I think what he's going to do here is go make the, make the four on the side, put a little bit of um, uh, left hand spin on the ball, go off three rails, back to just a little bit closer to the five ball than what the cue ball is right now. How big is that eight ball coming two rails out of that I corner? don't think it's anywhere in, in there at all. And it's actually back exactly where he was a minute ago. He's got a shot on this ball. This is good. Sure. It looks pretty much um, what you call a road map here.
Actually, he's not going to go very far with this cue ball. I'll just move it over about a foot and a half, I think. Ooh, he went further than I thought. I don't know why he wanted to go that straight on the eight ball. <laughs> I think he just wanted to shoot the seven a little more aggressively, a little more speed, send the cue ball to the to the right rail. Except now he's got to he's got to really hit this ball hard with some spin, like that. And he didn't get get all the way there. I think he's just being again, like I said, a little a little careless. Uh, he's not going to miss this ball. I hope we hope not. No, oh, there he goes. All right, well that's 7-4 for Rafael against Efren Reyes. But Efren's breaking, and, and as we mentioned, uh, anything can happen from here. He can put a few racks together. Let's take a look at his break now, uh, make a comment on, on what he does when he's breaking differently than anybody else. Just seems to me like Efren might be living the good life there in the Philippines. He just doesn't seem to be as hungry as I've certainly seen him in the years past. That's that is one of Rafael's strongest attributes is his intensity and desire to win is, Look, that, is tremendous. That's correct. Look, he just really hit that very very lightly. He the just wanted to break. control it. That he was trying the soft break. Uh, sure was. And it works real well on the table beside where, where Johnny Archer and uh, Tony Tommy Kennedy are playing. That's a great break there, but um, it didn't work there for him. Oh, look at Raphael! He was trying to get oh. too cute. He was he was trying to cheat the other cheat to the uh, to the uh, um, inside of the pocket and uh, come straight through and knock the nine out of the way and get on the two because he had a tough angle to get on the two any other way. I, 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 and so and he missed it, you know, took his eye off the ball and missed it. Uh, he, his cue ball was on the rail there. It, it only allowed him one option, and that is to shoot high on the cue ball. He wanted to, as you said, he wanted, oh, this is a direct scratch in the corner pocket. Look at that. <laughs> Raphael wanted to cheat the pocket a little bit, uh, uh, m basically giving him a more straight shot to let the cue ball travel down and knock the nine out of the way. And that is due to, to the cue ball being on the rail. If the cue ball would have been off the rail, he'd have had that option. That would have been a much more easy shot. He could have cued a little lower on the ball and, and uh, gotten position much easier. Well, this is another one of those road maps. Let's see how he wants to get on his ball. Just like that, yeah. That's the way I apply that. But he got too straight on it, really. Um, doesn't you know? He, he would really want to give himself some anger. Look at look at him smiling right now. He doesn't like it either. He's going to cheat this ball, I think, and um, just draw it over to the to uh, his left. No, he's going to hit the rail and then come up. Ooh, a little trickier. He cheated it the other way <laughs> yeah. and uh, drew into the rail and out. From here, you can't see exactly the uh, the angle that they can, but. Uh, he certainly had to hit a, a tougher shot than uh, if he'd have got better shape on the on the three ball in the first place. And it's really unusual to see that from from either of these players. There's that. There's that. Uh, see that that grip that he's got in the right hand, boy. It's nice and loose. And but it's always exactly the same tempo, just as you're mentioning. Nice and loose. Same thing as you're going to shoot it, poof, right through. Yeah, he, he he tends to go one, two, three, four. Exactly. Well, so does, so does Buddy Hall, doesn't he? A little bit different type of a stroke, mind you. But um, they do the same thing. One, two, three. Oops. That was easier. <laughs> Well, when he, no when more he than strokes four, it, when, he, when he only strokes it twice, then he'll be into Earl Strickland's stroke there. <laughs> one, two, bam. One, two, bam. <laughs> Look at it. That's uh, not a position you see Efren in all that often. With his back to you if from the camera. Racking. Score eight to four for Raphael. Take a look at Raphael's break now. I think he's going to try him a little harder. Yeah, he pushes his body right into it, but he made a ball. Did he make the corner ball? Yeah, he made the corner ball. He controlled the cue ball into the middle of the table, but I that's guess. like the the shot of playing the one in the side. If the one doesn't go in the side, it goes one rail back to the end rail. Mm -hmm. So 
that's what he's looking at here. No shot. I think he can see enough of the right-hand side of the one to... Uh, I don't think he wants to do that. If he's going to shoot at this ball, I think he wants to kick it. Uh, if he could, if he was more to left, more by the spot, he would spin off the rail and make the one. But from here, he's just going to play. He's going to. There he is. Going to play a rollout. And uh, I, I think Efren's going to tell him to shoot again. Uh, I wouldn't want this shot. Well, if he uh, elects to thin the. Yeah. The, the right side of the one. Yeah, he told him to shoot again. Send the cue all down two rails. Boy, you really got to hit this thin to keep from sending the one out in the middle of the table and, and selling out. I th uh, yeah, I think the whole key here is just is control that cue ball. Um, you want to, I, I, if he can see enough of the ball, I think he's going to want to spin that to come around two rails behind at the seven ball there in the corner. Let's see what he does. Yeah, that's what he wants to do. But scratched. Hit it too thick. He thinned the three ball a little bit and it took him right into the drink. Oh well. Again, you know, that just shows that <coughs> <coughs> Raphael again just put himself in a better position than what he had, but not good enough that that uh, Efren wanted it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but what he did do before though is he Kind of made the two a lot tougher by putting the six ball over there. Mm -hmm. So now Efren's got to get perfect shape on that two. And then the three is kind of tough too. Yeah. That From where the two. Six being over there a little closer has helped him out some. Looked like that cue ball skid or yeah. jumped a little bit on him sure there. Sure did. He came up uh, short. about a foot short and has hooked himself from being able to, to pocket the two ball. Yeah, and that can happen a lot too with that short of a shot when you want to put top spin on. It happens a lot. Uh, so I, I generally stay away from it, and I would have I would have tried to shoot the one ball in the corner in that corner and just come up with some draw, control my shooter a little better. But he double hit the uh, he was shooting to bank the the two ball there, and he got a double kiss. Let's take a look at that cue ball on the three ball. Let's see how tough that is. Boy, yeah. jacked up over the three yeah. ball and on the rail. It's going to be tough. So he's got a good shot at the two ball in the corner. If that, that three ball wasn't so close to the cue ball. Now what's he going to do? Is he going to try and play this? Well, you know, these elevated cue shots where you're jacked up over a ball or you're jacked up and have to draw the ball, those are usually best shot by taller players. But Raphael excels at this type of a shot. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, you mentioned about uh, top players should be better. Okay, let's take a look at this shot. Uh, i tell you what, he hit that. He stroked <laughs> it pretty good. It's just... Uh, so tough, and he got back That's here. That's a, a really difficult shot. Being elevated over the ball like that, uh, and ha which again is he's u having to use a top spin. If he's not hitting perfectly center ball, it's high ball, but if it's not perfectly centered, the cue ball is going to masse and oh, it's going to yeah. take all kinds of angles that you have no way to, uh, to really control. You just have to try to follow as straight through as possible and, and cue it as centered as possible. Definitely. Because as soon as you put any sidings on it when you do that, boy, besides this, the masse, it of course, it skids first. Skids to the left or to the right first. Just go goes flying in, in a direction that you didn't want it to. So it's uh, not a shot that I'd want to have to play. Having somebody jacked up over a ball like that is as good as having them hooked a lot of times. Well, they call it the Chinese hook, don't they? Isn't that, isn't that <laughs> is they, that the term? That's the term we used to use in snookers, Chinese oh, really? hook. <laughs> I have never heard that. Yeah, that's what we said all the time. Like, over a ball, it's Chinese hook. Like, the Chinese are so short, they can't get over there, you see. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, we are talking really about short and tall. Uh, to jump a ball pro really well, uh, the tall player definitely has the advantage. And yet, uh, in my view, this Rafael Martinez is the greatest jumper there is. He, uh, we played a tournament one time in Dallas, Texas, uh, just a weekly kind of tournament, and we were in the finals. Actually, there's a lot of great champions in that tournament, $10 tournament. We were in the finals in a race of five, and it was 4-4, Rafael and me in, uh, in the finals, and he snookered himself on the, off the break, and uh, he made, actually, to make his long story short, he made four jumps in a row and out to win. And it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. There we go. Light break makes the one ball. Now this is this is what he he was been shooting for, playing that one in the side with the 
real good control of the cue ball. He's got an ideal shot on the two. Gonna come right up for the nicely on the three ball. Well, there's no reason that he should not uh, get out here, which is a lot easier to say from this seat than from standing out there, but I expect great things from Efren always. Yeah, except that he got, I mean, he should be okay, but you don't, he didn't want to be straight on the four ball here. Any angle on either side is going to be great, but see, he's shaking his head a little bit because it's exactly where he didn't want to be. But he's just going to draw it back and play a little bit tougher, a longer shot on the six ball, that's all. That's all. And now, now he's going to make a good shot to get on the seven ball properly and to make the six. Whereas if he'd have been a little angle either way, it'd been nothing to get back down to the six. Well, if I'm his opponent, I don't want him to get stroking. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, how's his angle here? I think he's gonna he's gonna have to come off the rail, slide on the other side of the of the nine, like that. Yeah. Brings the score. Efren Reyes six games. Rafael Martinez eight games. Well, that work, that break. Uh, he tried it a few times. He finally refined it. I wonder if he can duplicate the same action. Well, I would. Uh, I would suggest uh, if I was his coach that he kept keep checking the rack here so that uh, he can be certain it's exactly the same way each time for, if he's going to do this kind of a break. I certainly would also say to do this kind of a break uh, once. He, but you see. That wasn't exactly. the same way, yeah. and actually he didn't hit it the same way either. He didn't draw straight off it. He, it's, that's a little, again, that's a little careless too, because if you're gonna hit that, that light, you wanna be really accurate. Now, well actually he's got two trouble balls here. He's got the one ball itself, which isn't that tough. Um, but one, once he makes that, it's nothing to get on the two ball, but he's got that, that four ball is trouble. I think what he's probably going to do is make the one, slide off the three into the eight, and make the combo on the three, nine. Yeah, slide off if the two into the eight. Right. And, uh, and be straight in for a three, nine combination. Right. Or even lighter, not even go into the eight. Well, that's fine, too. It's probably better. Into the direction of the eight, at least, yeah. If he doesn't, if he did miss the combination, the balls would still be tied up. Yeah. Well, looking at the AccuStats calculations here, their uh, TPA averages are going <laughs> down. Uh, the score is nine to six. As the the records that I'm looking at now are the, as the last track, the score is six games to eight games. Uh, Raphael's having problems with uh, safety errors, and he's missed three balls. Efren's missed a couple balls himself, but Efren is having problems with position errors. Position errors. What that means is that uh, in the in the event while he's running out, he's getting poor position for himself, and he's forcing himself to play safe. So as you review your, your play in a given match, you may say, I never missed a ball. But if you were getting poor position and you forced yourself to play safeties... You didn't play that well. You didn't play that well. You, you, f you, you, lost, those gave, you lost yourself that opportunity mm -hmm. to win that game in that single inning. And if you get back to the table, you consider yourself fortunate. Um, <coughs> The safety errors is the problems that Raphael is having, meaning that when he is executing a safety, whether he's forcing him, I was going to say whether he is forcing himself to ex execute a safety by getting bad position, that doesn't seem to be the case because he's not having position error problems. With the safety errors, when in the event that he does have to play safety, he's just not getting the hook, and Efren's able to get to the table and do something with it. Or if he is getting the hook, He's not uh, getting the hook good enough because that effort's pocketing the ball. Well, as a matter of fact, you know, we have a score here um, at, at the 8-6 uh, 
uh, position where Rafael had eight and, and, and uh, Efren had six games. Efren <laughs> made 63 balls and Rafael only made 62, yet he was up 8-6. So that certainly proves what you're talking about is 100% is correct. You can be playing, making more balls than your opponent and still losing. That's nine ball. This this gives this gives an accurate reflection of your performance and play at the table. It doesn't take in any luck factor in, and it doesn't take in. Uh, what a good shot! Now there's there's a there. there's an example of a great kick shot. That's a super kick shot from that position, and he he knew what he was doing right there. I think Effen's going to send the cue ball on the same pa path that the one ball did, right under the five, and try to. Now how do you like that shot? Wow, how that's much, awesome. How much control and knowledge was there? <laughs> that's awesome. How many times you know when when you're kicking at balls that are down there at the end rail how easy it is to scratch because the cue ball hits the kick and then goes directly right. down the rail into the right. pocket. Well, using that principle, what he's able to do is kick behind that ball with that scratch angle, I'll call it, and send the cue ball into the eight. Into the eight Beautiful. Uh, controlling the one, achieving a... Great ball control. Whew. See, all of these little subtleties and nuances of the games are a prime reason why I'm a cue maker and not a professional pool player. Well, it's one of the reasons why I'm a professional pool player because I, I, I love the challenge of no matter how good you get, no matter how well you play, it's just not good enough. And uh, you may be able to be in control of the game for uh, 100 racks where you're in control, you're, you're powerful, you own the table. And then you have uh, situations where uh, you can go another 10, 12 racks where things come up that y you don't know how you're going to get out, you don't know how to do this, or, or uh, oops, where the table gets you one way or another. And um, it's awesome. You, you've got to get that much better at kicks, that much better at jumps. Uh, that much better at everything. <laughs> Raphael's pulling out his jump cue. Um, we're going to get to see one of the things that he does so well. Uh, don't I, I, I wouldn't want the viewers to take lightly that that shot that Efren just shot. He just lagged at the one ball, but believe me, he had perfect understanding of where the cue ball's going and the fact that he's going to come up with a safety in the event that he doesn't take make the one. He was playing the cue ball just under the two here. He's going to shoot the two in the far corner. But there's a lot of forethought rather than just shooting at the balls and hoping for the best, that's for sure. Right. By the way, what Raphael is using right now is not a normal jump cue, a shorter cue. It's actually a full-length cue that weighs about 11 ounces. And uh, he jumps with that thing as good, if not better, than anybody that jumps with <coughs> anything they want in their hands. And he can get over, over balls so close with such accuracy with that long cue. That he's so short. It's incredible. Yeah, he was talking to me uh, some time back about building him a Market jump cue, shot. exactly what he wanted, and he wanted a full-length cue. You know, when he was jump jumping his ball, jump when, he, when the jump shot came into play, everybody was using a full-length cue, and he was excelling, it with the, was excelling at it with a full-length cue. He still likes that for the reason that he's gripping it the same as he would as he's playing. He can draw the ball. He can follow the ball. He has very much the same type of control rather than just getting it up and down. Yeah, I think uh, of all the top pros, he's the only one that I know of who even thought of going with an extremely light one at uh, the full length. Well, that's the part. That's what makes a uh, makes the ball jump, is that the the stick is light enough. Shot. When you cut that, when you cut that third of the cue off, the cue becomes so light that it jumps out of the way of the cue ball, and and eliminates the double hit of the cue ball and just and makes the cue ball re react instantly. I don't know if you know Pat, uh, Paul, but uh, Pat Fleming is the, the owner of the AccuStats video production company. He is the guy that invented the jump cue. I think he stumbled into it uh, by, well, he, he's been monkeying with cues as long as I've known him and doing everything you can imagine to him. Uh, but I think he popularized it by coming up with that short cue and, and getting that that jump uh, reaction out of it. Now he's still got short cue on the brain. Right now he's been playing with a 54-inch uh, pool cue. Is his full-time playing cue? Wow, that's great. It's always great to, to experiment with everything. And I, 
I, for one, thank uh, Pat for his uh, bringing about the uh, the short one then, because uh, I make use of it a lot, and uh, um, I like to think that I handle it fairly well. I've been practicing with it a lot, but we've got so many other jump cues now, about these kangaroos and these frogs, and man, there's a whole bunch of the metal ones, the wooden ones, the ones without tips. There's uh, just so many of them on the market right now, isn't there? Well, Efren's clawing his way back into this match, seven games to Raphael's nine. Well, how, what's your feeling as far as all of the new jump cues on the market and the legality of them? And if you were kind of legislating what was appropriate and inappropriate for professional play, what would you? What, what are your feelings on it? Well, if it was up to me, if I had the the power to make a decision solely, um, I would. Uh, I think the the fact of the jump cue being a just shorter or longer is fine. I think it's great. The jump shot itself is a great shot. I think having a tip on a cue, having a normal cue is great. Um, I would I would disallow the, the metal ones and the, the, the funny shaped ones that look more like a barbell than they look like a cue. Um, I would get rid of those. But if if the decision was mine, which it isn't, and uh, but whoever makes the decisions, uh, whether a choice would be to to outlaw all jump cues or allow them all, I would say allow them all because the jump shot is such a, a great part of the game and uh, the audience loves it so much and it, and it forces us to be that much better at our safeties and, it, and to practice other shots, you know. Uh, you gotta work at it. I work at the jump shot a lot with the different, different things so that I can get better at them too. Efren pushed out here. Um, one of the things I always notice about Efren is that whenever he's pushing out the beginning of the rack, he's always moving other balls. In this particular situation, he wanted to pocket the five ball. Uh, he didn't do so, and he's a little disappointed about it. He's always moving balls when it's when it's uh, when he's pushing out. Well, you want you know you want to make it a little bit tougher for your opponent if he ends up taking the shot to run out. Uh, in my view. Uh, I agree with that. Um, as a matter of fact, Pat Fleming has said to me uh, as well, and you, bring, you brought him up, that um, uh, he always likes to pocket a ball. He just finds it, it's, it's uh, a better strategy when you're pushing out to pocket a ball. And so he almost always does it, and, and uh, I've considered that, and at times I do as well, if I feel it's, a, it's to my advantage. Um, it just depends. <laughs> Situations will, will you know, dictate uh, what to do. Well, as far as what you were saying about the jump cue, uh, you mentioned you said it's good to have cues that have tips on them. A lot of the, the viewers may not be acquainted with some of the new jump cues that are on the market, and many of them, Ooh, uh, yeah. of the real short ones, they look like they have a tip. They, but what they have is a is a phenolic, much as a f the m material that your ferrule is made out of. Mm -hmm. There is no tip on it at all, which means that it's such a hard substance that as the ball as it hits the ball it doesn't absorb any shock it bounces instantly which which enables it to jump even easier well you know in if we're playing with our normal cue and we hit the cue ball with our furrow instead of with or or our shaft instead of our tip of our cue it's a foul so taking out another uh, another obstacle another not obst another object and using it that doesn't even have a tip well to me that should be a foul if it's a foul one time, it's a foul the other time as well. We we have to standardize it without a doubt. Whichever way we go is fine by me, as long as we go in such a way that it is standard and that we know what we what we're allowing, what we're not allowing, instead of you know guessing. So we have to do that. Our association has to has to uh, uh, do that sh shortly, in my view. And and uh, you know again, as I said, if it's canning all jump sticks or allowing them all, I'd say allow them all. But uh, I certainly like to see the tip thing. <laughs> that This last shot that uh, Raphael banked the one uh, into the pocket where the five ball was tied up, and it turned out that Efren not making the five served to help him in that particular instance. Look at this. I can't believe Efren missed that bank. I, that was an easy, that's a one pocket. It's a, it's a duck one pocket shot there. And Efren plays one pocket pretty good, doesn't he, Jerry? Well, in my estimation, he's un he's the best one pocket player in the world, no question. And that shot he just played was a pretty standard shot in one pocket. Yeah, he he seems a little bit uh, 
little bit off, a little lethargic or unhappy. Just slow. Yeah. Sure does. Yeah, and to play this game at the level, you know, we all play it, it's important. Your confidence level is really high, and you feel comfortable out there. And if you don't, the balls seem to start not going your way. This is an interesting, uh, interesting couple of players we're watching with a conversation of a jump cue. Efren Reyes doesn't use a jump cue. Um, he does now. The he didn't, has he, he just now, now oh, yeah. adopted the... Yeah, at, uh, which turn was that? Um, I'm not sure. I'm just trying to remember which turn it was last year that he pulled out a jump cue. Ah, it was at the U.S. Open <laughs> against Johnny. He pulled out a jump cue, and Johnny Johnny made uh, made some sport of it. And, uh, oh. and he did a really good jump shot, too. <laughs> that surprised the crowd, I'm sure. <laughs> it surprised Johnny, too. Whoops. And he made the shot. And it had a big smile on his face. It's nicer to see Efren smile these days than it was uh, a few years back <laughs> when he didn't have any teeth, isn't it? <laughs> I think I still think he's more comfortable without him. Maybe so. Yeah. It's also interesting, you know, that how much of a hero he is in uh, in the Philippines. You know, he's, uh, it's, it's like the Philippines, it's, it's almost like it's a national sport. He and um, Francisco Bustamante and Leonardo Andam, there's a lot of great players from the Philippines and they're certainly well respected there. Ooh, that's getting it close. Great shot though. He again, he, you know, his angle wasn't perfect on that ball, so he had to stun it and hit it harder, which of course is harder to control at that kind of distance, and he got perfect. Score 10 games to Efren's 7. Mm -hmm. and if Raphael can start breaking the balls a little better. How are you doing in this tournament, Paul? Well, I got fortunate uh, at the beginning. I got a uh, a bye, uh, so I beat him. <laughs> and then uh, my next match was uh, a very good player who we haven't seen on the tour actually, Reed Pierce from uh, Louisiana, Jackson, uh, Mississippi. Jackson, Mississippi. Well, uh, way down there anyway, somewhere down there. It certainly has an accent from the south. And um, Reed played real well. I was real fortunate though. I, I came out and played good as well. And we had me 12-10 in that match. Um, I come back to beat him 13-12 after he missed a, a real tough one ball in the, uh, when he was on the hill. Um, then I just lost to Earl Strickland. And this is the first time Earl's beat me, as a matter of fact, but uh, he played real well. And uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very pleased, even though I, I don't like to lose, but uh, I, I never feel that bad if I played well. If I played well, I can handle losing really well. Well, uh, Reed Pierce is, is known by a lot to be one of the best bar table players in the country. Very, very uh, powerful player. Sure is. He that's played a, great. <coughs> that's another feather in your cap to, to beat a player of that stature. Well, I'll but tell you, it was um, it was one of those uh, battles. Same kind of battle I just had with Earl. Earl and I had a, a real battle together just now. It was back and forth. I got ahead nine eight after running four racks, and then uh, and then. Uh, at 9-9, nine, nine, uh, Earl broke and ran four to put me out of it. How many times had you played Earl before you beat him in the, in the World Championships? Uh, that was the second time I played Earl was in the Worlds. Uh, I beat him in Secaucus, New Jersey in March uh, last year, and then I beat Earl. That match um, at the World Championships was you know, definitely my greatest match. I played because I was down 11-3, and he played. Uh, he was playing awesome. But... Uh, Okay. But we got we got Efren playing well again here. Running out. It's 
So, on the, by the way, on the match, uh, on the next table with Johnny and uh, Tommy Kennedy, Tommy Kennedy won the match 13-6, which is a great win for Tommy. Score eight games Efren, ten games Raphael. If Efren can get this break though on this light tap. Again, he's not checking the rack. He's no. uh That's not very smart. No, he wants to break him now. No more <laughs> No more uh taking a chance. Well he did pocket a ball on the break and he's come up with a shot on the two. Now this is this is a an interesting position here. Look at where the one and the and the cue ball is, and look at the traffic that he's got around him of the six ball, and then the five ball, and having to come all the way down the table here to the get on the two. Now this is what I like to see Efren shoot. I'm not so sure he's going to try and make this at all. Well, he's going to he's going to he make a smart checking. play. Yeah, it's a great shot. Look at this. Great shot. How do you like that shot? That's a super shot right he there. That's applause out of me. That's an awesome shot. Boy, I'd love to see that in slow motion replay. What a great shot. Well, it seems like sometimes he needs challenges like that to, to get his <laughs> attention and really make him pull the effort out of himself. What a great shot. Put a lot of check on that ball there. Inside sidings to come off the rail straight back out. But he gave himself too much angle, so he had to come back around table again. And a little short of where he wanted to be, but he's he's gonna stun off two rails again for the six in that same corner where the six is right now. Closest to. Little right hand stun. I was surprised to see him do that. I thought he was just going to go get some to more the check off and it and just come back up, you know. I was really surprised to see him do to that. To play the eight in the side? No, no, to come back to come back more out to shoot the eight in the same pocket he shot the six in. But because uh, the angle wasn't all that much. That's why he hit it so hard. Uh, yeah. And he, st and he didn't get around because it was so much ball. I would have checked that ball. My goodness. Hmm. I don't expect to miss that bank either, though. He was well, unhappy with himself. I'll tell you what, that's the momentum he needed to, to, to put himself back in this match. Or not back in the match, to put himself in striking distance to win. I don't know if you noticed what Efren just did as he was coming back to the table, but he put his arm around back behind his head to pick up his shirt. <laughs> he does that whenever he, he's unhappy with himself. He does that. I've noticed that for uh, the three years that I've, I've seen Efren. He always, when he's unhappy, he puts his arm around and picks up his shirt. <laughs> well, this is not an easy shot. He's left Raphael. No. Center of the pocket, three rails around the table position on the nine. He's got fairly deep cut on the nine ball here. But, uh, Raphael's so good at this shot, he, though. Yeah, he Real long bridge on it. Watch how steady he'll stay on this ball. Body doesn't move. Ooh. Oh. Can't believe it. Maybe I jinxed him. I shouldn't have said anything about how good he was in that shot. Well, he missed him on the professional side, as they call right, it. Right, right. Yeah, you want to miss him on the right side. Yeah, you want to make sure that you hit that ball too thin rather than too thick. This is the uh, results of hitting it too thin. It brings it out to the center of the table. Too thick, it goes two rails. Oh. It goes two rails and leaves the cue ball and the object ball out in the middle of the table. Watch, see, the, see this? Look at the, the shirt. Oh, he can't see the camera. Paul, look at the look at the. Uh, we're gonna do a replay here, and let's look at the line, position line that it goes between the five six. Lots of lots of inside ball. English. Three rails, then hitting the fourth rail here to die across the table. Yeah, it's position a great shot. on the position on the two. He hit it so solid. He hit it with such confidence, and yet his confidence level kind of goes up and down right now. 
think it's uh Raphael is, is checking every rack Smart. And, and is having objections with half of them. Watch Raphael move his body right through, right forward as he hits the ball. Okay. Give himself a little bit extra power, yet at the same time keep the accuracy because he goes forward in, the, in that direction rather than sideways or up. Let's see, see a lot of a lot of pool players watching, great players get a, get the wrong idea, get the wrong impression of a good break. They they end up thinking that you have to jump up on the break and so the cue ball bouncing all over the place when really it's going forward. It's driving that body weight and momentum forward. Correct. And you have to really be doing it accurately so the cue stick doesn't change its direction. Well, he's going to pull the three ball back here, playing the four ball in the, in the uh, could be in right hand corner. Ah, it looks to me like he's doing fine. I think he can draw the ball right back to the left hand long rail and swing out for position on the on the four ball. He's got his leg hiked up there. No, I guess he went right by the nine ball, giving himself two rail position. It was the easier route for sure, but it's harder for us to see it from here whether he could do that or not. That's about <coughs> perfect. Not see how he wants to get on this eight ball. I just go straight up table, nice and easy, just like that. That's that's perfect. Yeah, you want to get as close to that eight ball as you can get, so it'd be easier to get back to the nine ball. You'd rather have a little more angle on that ball, but that's fine. Looks like he's. I guess he's got a little angle. Goes straight down to the short rail and. Well, he hit that good the way he hit table. that. Whew. That puts Raphael on the hill. 12 to 8. That momentum that Efren had, he... Uh, relinquished it easily. Yes, he, he relinquished control for by uh, an error, and uh, it's clearly cost him the match. Well, we can't call him out definitely here, but uh, if you know you want to make odds, certainly it's <laughs> definitely in Raphael's favor. Maybe I'm, I'm being a little prophetic, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, I know I've won from here a lot of times, and, and uh, Efren is uh, is definitely my better. And uh, even if he's playing a little weak, something like this can get him out of his... Uh, Raphael, yes, you're right. I, I Raphael is a closer. He, uh, he's going he's gonna to stay there and close the match to the best of his ability. Oh, he got a bad roll there. He hit that so good, too. That's the best way of doing it. And look at this bad roll. Now, I see the guys jumping with the jump sticks. Would jump over that, make that ball, and get on the three. But he's going to play a kick shot. And so quickly, he just up and just shot it. I, th I think he doesn't have the heart he normally has right now in this match, does he? I think he's living the good life back <laughs> home. <laughs> Might be. He doesn't seem that happy. Look, at, uh, again, the camera didn't pick it up, but he. Picking up that shirt there. <laughs> well, Raphael knows he's on the hill. He's uh, he's going to be sure to not be careless and be sure to to give himself every opportunity to to close the set here. Correct. And you know, even at Raphael's worst, he's seldom careless. He doesn't, he's very, very consistent. That's what. That's why he was in the top four last year and got in uh, the top eight almost every tournament. That was amazing. Never won one. <coughs> you can't give this guy an inch. Angle is there. I think he's just going to roll this ball in. No? 
Let's get all the way back up to that side of it. Hmm. Straight in on the six ball in the side pocket. <coughs> if I was a betting man, and I'm not, I would certainly uh, bet everything I had on Raphael here right now running out. He, he was... Because of where he's on the six. Because of how he's on the six. He was uh, thorough enough to even go over there and look and see if the seven ball was on the rail. All he has to do is just draw this ball back up about a foot. Maybe he'd probably come up two feet, but... That's great. It's perfect. Right angle. Gliding a glides over to the eight ball as a perfect angle to come down to the nine. Hit about the center of the rail on the... On well, the long he, rail. He almost overcut that ball too, but that's where he wanted to be was shorter on the rail instead of longer. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if we have time to have a minute to speak with Raphael. This matches are, are running a little bit behind. <coughs> well, that was a uh, great example and a lot of the fundamentals that'll that'll get you through those those tough matches. I've uh, disappointing to not see Efren play a little bit better, but I, I certainly wish the best for, for Raphael. Uh, he is, as you said, he is due to win a, a professional uh, tour stop. To tour stop. He's always been a strong finisher, but uh, he certainly has, is qualified to, to win. Well, it's been, it's been fun sitting and watching such great pool and talking with you, Paul. I appreciate the opportunity to do so. Well, it has been great. This is my first time uh, as a... Um um, what would you call it? Uh, guest. Guest, yes. And uh, and I'm sure I'll be doing it again. It was a lot of fun and uh, a nice chat with you, Jerry. Yes, this is AccuStats Video Productions. Again, professional world-class nine ball. If you'd like to order any other tapes of these particular players or, or get an inventory list of all the great matches that are on file, the 1-800 number is 1-800-828-0397. Thanks.